Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem. Today we're going to be looking at doing Sanguinus, um, the Blood Angel Lord, and um, we're going to be doing him. Well, I'm going to be showing you how to paint him in this video. This video is going to require various different techniques. It's going to require different paint brushes. It's going to require uh, some contrast paints. It's going to require an airbrush because we are going to be going to town on a lot of. Uh, a lot of the techniques used for this figure because of course this figure is a very important it's a very important piece to me because I've always liked Blood Angels so Sanguinus is here to basically <laughs> be in my uh, Blood Angel Heresy army now as you can see to begin with I've got all the pieces I've got other components separate various different components separate that i'm wanting to keep separate so i've got the main body it does have his cloak on which i'm gonna to have to hand paint um and of course part of the base but the main body is assembled including his legs his weapon uh, some of the tabards that are coming off and um, we're going to be doing that with a particular gold that i've managed to get hold of from green stuff world yes i love my green stuff world because it is really good his head is separate which I've attached to small plinth. That has actually been painted up in the contrast colours because uh, the contrast flesh, that's in grace here, that contrast flesh is really, really good. And I'm uh, thinking as well, if I'm putting the, uh, like a goldy sort of yellow into his hair, just to make him the ultimate blonde, um, that should work quite well. His hand is separate with his blade um, this is mainly because it goes across a lot the front of the model and I didn't want that to affect um, how the model was going to look. Of course his scenic base is separate. I've kept the demon off the scenic base. Uh, we are going to be spraying him up separately. Uh, we're going to be doing him in the traditional demon in reds but he's also injured. Um, so I'm going to try and see what type of effects I can do for his injuries. And finally his wings. His wings are off because, of course, the rest of the model is going to be quite dark. The wings are quite bright. I'm going to do them with a traditional sort of white. Um, these are going to be heavily dry brush. I'm not using a uh, an airbrush on those. They're mainly going to be dry brushing. And that's to try and keep the consistency of it being quite random with them being a, um, a, piece, well, a piece of biological matter that's coming out of his back. I quite like the idea of doing the base, but I'm not quite sure what colours we're going to be doing just yet. I do think it's going to be quite close to how Games Workshop makes uh, paints the actual figure, but with various different flourishes using various different paints. So we're going to crack on, it's my favourite word. We're going to get on with it, we're going to start with the body, and let's get this gold painted. Now before we properly actually get started, I completely forgot to mention, I coat everything in a normal black undercoat, and then, because this works better, the paint actually works better with a gloss varnish, I then put a um, hard coat all over the areas that I'm wanting to have the effect on. I don't do it on all the areas because I'm wanting the normal cloak to be a normal cloak at the end of the day. Um, so it's just painting, hand painting the areas with the gloss varnish and waiting for that to dry. It can take a while. So let's ignore what I said previous. All right, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna start on this guy. So I'm gonna prep some areas first. This guy is gonna start off with a bestial brown layer. So I'm gonna put that over the majority, probably keeping the recesses black. Um, I'm gonna put that over the majority. I'm gonna hold it by that because of course that's gonna be born for me later on. Now once I've done that, and I'm going to go move on to the base and we're going to hit that with some Dark Reaper. So we've got a nice big dollop in here. And like I say, effectively we're just going to kind of spray him a little bit from above. Let's pull him out all onto his bed. Maybe we're in parallel. Apologies for the compressor noise. not want to get everything in this brown to start with. 
Oh, I, I am, but I'm not wanting to get the underneath. I can show that we've got a nice even coat. And that is how we're starting this. Next up, we're going to hit it with corn red. We're going to do the same sort of thing, just try to keep it a bit lighter this time. More of a top down angle. Don't forget, this will dry brighter. So it will dry darker than what it's actually going on on. If you see anywhere where you think that needs darkening, or lightning, just hit it with the airbrush. Right, let's leave him to dry. So back onto the main event. We've got the Green Stuff World Color Shift Metal Burning Gold. We're gonna be painting the whole armor with this. Um, it's gonna be all over, so we're not gonna Remember to do it in layers until you're happy with it. Oh, it's already coming through looking nice, that. Now remember on this, you need to do multiple thin layers to get the best effect. Right, so don't also as well, don't forget the hand. From his spear that will also need doing as well so see a nice looking alternative gold for sanguinus's armor can't have him the lord of the blood angels we can't have him with a basic looking gold now can we so that i'm going to put one side we're going to let that dry and while that's drying we're going to crack on with the face so for the face we are simply going to ha add a uh, contrast paste dark off flesh to give it a nice dark in color and then i think it's nasdreg yellow for the hair these are effectively what's going to be our basing colors so we're going to put that on the face put that on the hair uh, and that will give us um, the look, well the basic look that we need before we go on to any highlighting. So that's the face that's been done. I'll try and bring that close up so you can see it. Uh, it's a bit, just turn that light off actually. See whether or not the natural light would make it look any better. No it doesn't. There we go. So that's one coat of the flesh, one coat of the yellow. I know he's got a reef that needs doing, but we're going to paint that with uh, a different type of gold. But effectively, all I need to do is to come in and highlight and paint up his eyes. That's why I like using contrast in some situations. Not everything's great for contrast. Um, some colours is not fantastic. I think the yellow and the flesh, even the green is actually pretty good. Um, but the rest of it can be a little bit daunting, a little bit rubbish but that's effectively the head so we're done with the head <laughs> we'll put that to one side and then what i'm going to get because i really want the gold to be dry i'm going to get this boy back out i'm going to dry brush him with some 
Sorry for being across the camera. Some Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to dry brush his entire body with a very light dry brush of that paint. So that's been done. So now he's been dry brushed. He just needs various little bits of armor plating and his wounds sorted, which we will get to in a moment. I'm going to check on Sanguinis, see if he's dry. So when he is dry. So now we're going to use my favorite masking stuff, the old power film, laboratory film. We're going to cover the body, uh, allowing us to then be able to start on the base. There he is, all nice and wrapped. Now, I did put a bit of blue tech up there because there was a tiny little gap and I didn't really want any spray to be able to get up onto the gold. So what we're going to be doing for the actual basing, so we're going to get the base and do that at the same time. Whee! We're going to use Dark Reaper and I'm going to airbrush that all over to start with and then we're going to use some Mechanical Standard Grey, then we're going to use some Dawnstone and then we're going to use some, um, yeah, some Adeptus Grey, I think it is, one of them, Administratum Grey, that's it, that's it. So now we're going to hit some of this with the Mechanical Standard Grey, we're just going to, just going to hit it just on the, Like random patches. We don't want it to be too serious. I think I'm still drying. So, kind of like a standard grey, you can barely see it. So I'm now I'm going to be putting the Dawnstone on. I'm going to keep when you're doing the Dawnstone, keep it still and just do it, hit it from a distance. Like we're edging it. Again, don't forget this stuff, when it's dry, when it dries, it's lighter than when it goes on. It's darker, sorry, than when it goes on. So, I did the um, Administratum grey dry brush, but I've also then got the small dry brush out. Did that with a medium. Different dry brush, because of course, lighter colors. If you've got a red, which I did earlier, and as you can see, it stains it, but if you've not gone and, and cleaned it yet. I tend to clean all my brushes at the end of a project. Um, so I've been a start, and, and then a little bit of Tyrant Skull has been laid or dry brushed into the edges. Now what I'm gonna do as well, just before we continue with anything else, I'm gonna hit the whole entirety of the base with uh, null oil. Uh, not No, sorry, apologies. All the inner cracks and everything else, I'm gonna hit that with null oil, make it, make it very, very dark. Don't get me wrong, I'm gonna be putting some, once these bases are nearly finished, I'm gonna be putting like a flame effect, as if the earth itself is cracking open, because of course that's what it looks like on the actual picture. And, uh, Get him in there. That's what he's going to be doing when we're finally ready. Um, I don't think I'm going to do them brass. They're probably going to be tin bits from Valesio. I'll, I'll, I'll inform you about when I get to it. Um, so now that this is drying, I'm going to hit it, like I say, with the null oil. Once that null oil is dried, um, let's get all the chaos icons done. Okay, so next up, I'm going to use tin, tinny tin from Vallejo. Um, that's going to be put all over the Chaos Icons. I've got the wings and everything in view here. That's going to be put all over the Chaos Icons on the actual uh, scenic base. And once Tinny Tin's done, we are going to use the... I always forget the name of this goddamn thing. There we go. We're going to use Screaming Bell, which is slightly different. We're going to use that all over Captain Red here. And that's going to be on what's perceived to be his armor pieces. And like I say, all of this is going to go into a wet palette. 
I know you're not supposed to use wet metallics for wet pallets, but I use it for thinning at the same time. And with the laser stuff, it, it works well. Because, you know, you can just slock it together. That is loose, but I will sort that out in a bit. Yeah, that's going to get going to get the effect out I want anyway. So one of the next things while I'm waiting for that to dry is going to be the bone. So we've painted the brass kind of um, with the every time scorpion brass screaming bell and now we're going to do a little bit of wet palleting. We're going to do this on his arm. So we're going to go from, basically we're going to go that way. So corn red mixed with steel region drive just to give it the base. And, and then we're going to go on that, on the bone, all over the bone. Uh, and of course just doing it in single swipes. Now I'm going to show you on the first one uh, what I mean by single swipes. So let's, uh, Get our wet palette ready. And it's always going to be a bit, uh, don't want too much red. It'll be slightly transparent to start with. Now, what I mean is, is that we're going to go like this. So we're going to go in a single way of a stripe. I'm going to do different directions. And they all the same way. So we're going to do the top ones. We're going to go up. Do this on all the bone bits. And next, because we're wet palleting, get the camera right, we're going to add a bit more steel legion to the mixture and repeat. So, this is going to be the longest process if I'm completely honest, You're always leaving a little bit more of what you've done before, making sure that it's got some runniness to it, again, same direction, same direction, that will become apparent when you use a smaller brush in a bit, don't forget, don't do the bits that are not looking like they're joined to the skin, what we're trying to do is to create a transition between the red and yes we could do that with an airbrush but if we use an airbrush um, we're gonna obliterate some of the red detail so just on the select few pieces that I've done did notice that his whole head is actually quite bony so I decided to even if you do it it in little strips so then on his neck when we get to his head which will be pure steel legion drab in fact I'll probably paint his face now if you paint his entire face his entire head with this and don't forget, in Sanguinus's hand, he has the other component to this. He has the other part to that. The bit that he's got in his hand. 
So, what I need to do is to paint that in the same method as well. So I've done a couple more layers, and now I'm just going to use pure Steel Legion Drab, and again, just using it on a wet palette, but I'm using this with a smaller brush, and the reason I'm using this with a smaller brush is because I'm wanting fine lines, and then we had a disaster there, as you can see, fine lines run away from the bone and I'm wanting them different lengths so sometimes I go further in sometimes I go further you know like closer in closer out and this will start to get that nice pattern effect I sometimes see on different bone pieces which is why you always should uh, follow it in a straight line way once uh, don't forget as well to do the claws and feet uh, when you've got the pure colour coming in. I'll do it when it's the once you've got the pure pure steel legion drab. that would be even more amazing. Do right. so you know what I'm doing? And we're just repeating the same process by adding to land sand to the original, not original colour, but to yeah, Steel Legion. And we're just repeating. And then once we've done to land sand and got across, we're then using the to bone until we actually get a nice decent looking bone structure I'm going to use my favourite word and I'm going to crack on so I've completed the stages I'm now going to slap some washes on so no no is going to go on the brass uh, it's also going to go on the tin on here and then I'm going to get some Lamium Medium and some Seraphine Sepia I'm going to put a little bit of a wash over our gold in fact backtrack on here we're going to get some Nilox Oxide and a bit of tissue I'm going to cover it in Nilox and then we're going to run run it off so it only leaves it in the, uh, the deepest recesses. So let's see if I can get this shown to you. So we've got our Dynalux Oxide. Try and do an example on the big one. We're going to all the way up. Make sure it's all covered. And then we get our fresh tissue. Put a finger behind the back and we're just going to rub the majority of that off. That will make it look. Yeah. Right, I'll pack on with the rest. So, the rest of that has been done. And don't look too bad. Just gives it a nice rusted sort of different feel the base of course is nowhere near them we're going to be adding all sorts of little effects with the airbrush later on to that um i think we're gonna have to crack on with this leopard print what i mean by this leopard print is the back of sanguinus's model we've got this sort of like a dead animal a lot of people paint it up as leopard i'm going to be doing the same um, so we're going to start with a base there's going to be some odd colours here we're going to start with a base of XV88 we're then going to hit it with Tau Sept Orca I can't remember what modern version there is a Tau um, more modern version of this um, which is a bit of a lighter colour to that and we'll probably have a wet blend in but I'm going to have a look and then that's it yellow so basically like a new Shabti bone but a yellower one 
this is the colours I'm going to be doing. So some of those, that's three different generations. Oh, I'm not in focus. That's three different generations of paint. So you've got a modern secondary. Well, it wasn't the secondary. It was something that was a bit before this version that we currently have here. And then that is after I started collecting. So that's when they got the hex, well, the second generation of the hex pots with the lift up lid. Right. So I've got my Tau XV88. I'm just going to paint, I'm not painting the inner bit, but I'm just going to paint the entirety of the back. I might need a couple of layers depending on how thick this paint actually is. I'm using a wet palette to thin it down. Being very careful not to get the gold. But we're going to paint all of the cloak at the back. We've got first light done, we're now going to apply uh, some Tau Set Orca or similar colour. So we can make quite a little bit of money. A bit of water on there. A bit more. Well, it needs to be slightly translucent. Now, maybe even mixing a bit of the other colour actually. I'm not going to be using this all over what we're doing if you ever look at leopards they tend to be lighter color underneath so we're going to be putting i'm going to be doing it in a certain section we're going to be putting this lighter color on his jowls maybe towards the tips of the ears as well Put on his paws. I'm going to put it around the edges, and what we're going to do is just try and aim down. Trying to keep it a certain way. This is thin, this is not to be a massive colour just yet. I am actually going to apply an ink wash over all the figure. Two ink washes actually. So that, I think it'll look like this is on the underside. Careful again not to get it on. you don't get it on your gold. Hopefully you can still see that. Yeah, we're good. So we're not looking for massive coverage as of yet, because we are going to be applying a wash. Underneath, see that there. Just getting underneath that. Yeah. Normally I'd skip to the next bit, but it's quite important that you actually follow what I'm doing. My brush is flaming apart there. I'm just gonna get some more thin down. We're gonna go across the top. transparent I don't want it to be an amazing color I want it to dry a bit off if you understand me Just make sure all your pieces. And 
that will dry. You're not really be able to see it much. I mean, you can just barely see that there once it's dry. Once that's dry, we're going to get out the seraphin sepia. So we've got a seraphin sepia wash. We're just going to then apply this all over, um, including the bits we've done. And it's going to be, we're just going to basically just not drown it, but just coat everything in a shade of seraphin sepia wash. Well, not everything. Now while we're waiting for the seraphin sepia to fully dry, we've got some more to do on that. Uh, we're going to start on the wings. So I've got the wings, they were Spade Mechanica's standard grey. Still actually on the original basin because all you need to do is to cut off about there and that will then fit into the back so there's not a lot of trimming to do. Um, we're going to, using a medium dry brush, we're going to use dry brushing technique on all of this. This is basically going to be starting off with a dawn stone. So we're going to dry brush, heavy dry brush, dawn stone all over uh, the wings. So we've got some but not all and um, we're just going to go in a circular motion across the entirety of the wings. And I might even do this a couple of times. So after you've done the dry brush, have a look to see if that's dried. It's not completely dried yet. <laughs> so, next layer then, Administratum Grey. We're going to, again, heavy dry brush this across the entirety of the wings. Using that uh, medium brush. And we're going to go over it twice, just like we did before. Make sure you get those feather tips. Now I've checked, we're still not dry on this fella. So we're going to use Admin Grey and Skull White. We're going to mix those two. Use that lid. 50-50. There's a lighter grey going. And we're going to dry brush this one again. We're not going to. So you can test it on your palm. So it's the effect you get. We're not going to go circular. We're now going to go up and down. I'm going to follow the wings. So this one's going to go backwards and forward. Across the entirety of the wing. I'm going to go backwards and forwards with that one. I'm going to do that on all four. And we're still not dry, so white. I'm using the brush and the pad. Um, so I'm still picking up little bits of grey at this moment in time. But again, we're going to just going to go all towards the edges of the feathers in an up and down motion. Two lots of this on. So we've got our wings how I wanted them. I didn't want it all pure white. And you can see all the feathers. The uh, seraphin sepia is now dry, so <laughs> we're going to add more seraphin sepia. Uh, what we're going to use? I'm going to use a small base brush. One of my favourite brushes to use. And we're going to repaint. I'll put a heavy amount into the recess. Effectively, we're going to be creating a recess shade now. And that's in all the creases. That will give it a darker tone. So 
It's not everywhere, so it's just in the bits that are hidden away. It increases itself. We're we'll always going back over these. Oop, I missed the spot. Never a good thing. Right, now we're going to have to let that dry again. So while we're going to let that dry, let's crack it on with this spear. So we're going to do a golden spear. I know we've got golden armor, but the armor will look different to this one. We've got retributor armor. And I'm going to do everything up to there. So the tip of the spear is not going to be gold. And the handle, we're not going to be doing that one gold either. We're going to be doing that a different color. As you can see, that gold and that gold don't look the same. One's darker. And we'll look darker once we've got some shading on there. And that goes. The rest of the handle, but not the bit that's handle we're going to hold on to. Well, the next two parts, the handle is going to be painted with Caesar Red from Green Stuff World. This is one of their metal colour ranges. It takes a while for it to be shook up. And then the actual tip itself, I'm going to be doing that with Green Stuff World Mystic White. These are two metallic colours, so this will make it look nice and shiny. You can see from the Caesar Red, it's like a burgundy light colour. Primarily, sometimes an airbrush paint, so you might need two coats. Yeah. Now, Mystic White all over the end blade. This is actually quite a thin paint, as you can see. So, it's definitely will need several coats. Now I've got my television running in the background. Apologise about that one. Okay, now it's the spear's turn to dry. We've gone back to XV88 uh, with the Tau Sept Orca. And we're just going to, again, just line up this shade. And then wet blending this Forget this dries a lot darker when it goes on. Now I'm going to just get more orca.
Fuck right. So. Desert yellow territory, isn't it? Maybe more and more than the recesses. We could ever want to paint one of these. For real. Right. So Desert Yellow mixed with the Tau Sept Orca. Or Okra. Again we're just applying it. A bit nice and thin. Bit of the old transparent system. See that? You see that bubble? Yeah. It's still good paint because of course we're just going to be thin on here. That's going to be right at the edge, except on the face. It's going to have a bit more and the pores. A bit on the pores. But again, edge. So you can always add a second layer of this. Apologies because this is thin. I'll leave that for now. Now we're going to try and finish the fur off because uh, he needs finishing off personally, but uh, it's going to be rhyme oxide. And what we're going to do is little half moon shapes. We're going to paint it down again using the wet palette. Half moon that way, and then and back the other way. Make some smaller ones here. And every now and again, a larger one in. going to be what's called the leopard spots. So a little quirky, uh, we've got a little mouth at the side of the puma or whatever it's going to be, leopard. So what I'm going to do is to fill the mouth with corn red and then I'm going to paint <coughs> the teeth in a very small thin brush, barely, funny hairs on it. Um, we're going to paint the teeth back in using sort of bleach bone, not bleach bone, uh, it's Yushabdi bone now. And then while we're doing that we're going to paint the inner bit here with Yushabdi bone. And um, sort of like the inner bit of the cloak there. And then we're going to hit that with Agrax Surf Shade and we'll hit the mouth with uh, Seraphim Sepia. Okay, so I've even painted a bit of black on his little nose, look, oh, that has been done. So, next up is going to be more on the spear. I'm going to paint the entire shaft with Agrax Earthshade and that I'm going to paint with Gulliman Glaze. So while the spear is drying, 
Um, some of you will probably have put, because you don't have to put the tassels on, because I only put a little bit coming on there. That normally goes across the crotch, but I prefer it to actually go sideways. And sometimes you'll have a bit more, but the tassels themselves, I'm going to paint an old school way. We're going to start off with rhinoxide. So while we're painting rhinoxide, get your, let me get my small base brush. We'll put it straight on. I'm also going to paint the pouch that's holding his pistol. So paint these and the pouch with rhinoxide. So apologies, I've actually missed a bit. Um, I've painted the inside of the Puma skin um, with that was painted with your shabty bone and then I went over it with Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to go over that in a moment with some more layers of your shabty bone we're going to, we're going to fin it with um, the wet palette now I've done the brown as stated uh, on the holster and on the tassels but I've also painted certain sections silver so get my uh, trusty brush God, I'm knocking everything over. So little bits like that, the wings, the little tabards, I've actually painted them silver and I've painted his gun silver. We're gonna hit that with contrast paint um, because uh, the yellow over the silver will give us another type of gold. I've even done that, if you notice, I should have actually done that at the same time and I could have just cut it in one coat, but I've done that on his hair. So the yellow, over the silver will actually give us a completely different contrast. Um, so, but the next step, like I said, apologies for the door slamming, is going to be um, the cloak. So we're going to get your shabty bone, we're going to thin it down, quite thin. We're going to use this wet palette. I'm going to get like a medium base brush, this is not a medium base brush for this workshop, but it's about the right size. And I'm just going to, maybe a little bit more water, I thank you paint pot. So, for a bit, I don't need more paint there. Yeah, so we've got a bit of transparency and we're just going to, Layer this in lines. We're going to go with the cloak. Go like that. And we're just going to layer that in lines. Best as we possibly can. Trying to miss some recesses if need be. And we're going to do this about two or three times. But what you can do while that's drying, so we'll hit all that, move bits, and while that's drying, we're going to hit all that silver with Nasdreg yellow. Apart from the gun, we're going to hit that with black. Templar. These are the two contrast paints that we're using. Nice red yellow, black Templar. This will give us another variant on the gold uh, because so far we should have three different types of gold. We've got like a darker one now. We've got the one that we did with the uh, spray. Um, we've also got that which I'm going to actually dry brush a bit more. Retributor armor, then silver over the top of that one. That will give us the third looking gold. And that, but now at the moment, let's get on with this, some of this. I do I want more control, so small basin brush again. Do not want too dissimilar. But it looks different enough so that it stands out. Try and catch it on here. As you can see, a different look already coming through. And it's a subtle change, but it's enough to make a difference. 
So, several layers, you've shoved a bonus put into there just to sort of finish it off. Uh, I didn't mention actually, I'm, I'm doing the scabbard Blood Angel Red because I don't think there's enough Blood Angel Red on this figure. I know there's some blood drops, but there isn't a lot of Blood Angel Red. We've done the black, leaving the edge of the weapon silver. And of course we've done all of the eagles which look like a slightly different silver colour to the gold that's already on there. So, I'm going to get, yeah I will use this brush. I'm going to get sort of like a medium basing brush. We're going to get some corn red. We're going to thin it down similar to what we've done with the Ushab to bone. And we're going to paint that into these bits. We're going to go in certain directions. I don't know if we touch edges, we're going to hit that with a different, we're going to hit that with normal gold in a moment. Oh. Apologies for the background noise. Sometimes when the children are off, it's very, very noisy. Especially in my house. Just make sure that you do both sides. Once you've done both sides, let it dry a bit and then apply another layer of apply another layer of corn red. Now I get some nice deep tabards. I think that's what we're calling the light. Stuff that flows off him. Maybe one more pass, and then we're done. So, on the little tab out bit, even on his sword, I'll put the little bits of gold back on. We're going to go over that and the sword in Seraphine Sepia in a moment. Anyway, while I've got the gold out, let's get a bit of dry brushing going on. Back onto this handle. I'm going to bring it. Well, the old spirit is going away. It's actually quite delicate, is this. So just be careful. I'm dry brushing it. I'm going to get on the red. actually snapped off but I can get that out in a moment anyway um, apart from the blood drop that's going to be pretty much done right maybe I should put a bit of a dry brush on his face so Sanguinus is going to have a bit of a light tone to his face so I'm actually going to dry brush it with some Cadian flesh tone I'm going to use a small dry brush this was a, an old brush of mine Very lightly, we're going to get the majority of this off. We're going to very gently and lightly. Just the bits of this face. I'm sure we're just going to catch the raised features. Okay, so we're nearly ready to reassemble Sanguinus. I've put the Seraphim CPU, as you can see it's drying. Uh, I need to put a bit more Seraphim CPU on those skulls. Um, but now we need to do the blood drops, including the weird blood drops that he's got on his chest. Now, if you've seen any images, the weird blood drops on his chest are very unique looking. And they tend to be like circular red dots with a black line running through them, very similar or reminiscent to the Sons of Horus. So, let's see if we can get a close up for me to go from. Yeah, 
So basically, it's like a big gem, and then we've got the heart going through it. So the smaller hearts, the smaller blood drops, we are just going to go straight to cone red, and then we're going to blend, wet blend it up to evil sun scarlet. The bigger pieces, we're going to start with our favourite colour, the Rhinox Hide and then blend up to corn right so we're going to start with that first we're going to put that into all the bits and then we'll start wet palleting until we get to a consistency that we're happy with that we'll put that into the rest you know what i mean we know where we're going i think all right Rhinoxide right oxide into wet palette very very small These are actually a lot smaller than I thought they were. Might need to get close on that one. So, the red, if you can just see it, has been done. I've done the knees and everything else. I'm now going to cover that with Caraberg Crimson. And then, we're gonna go again with some of the lighter colors. So hopefully, we'll just put an edge on it. I'm not gonna hit it with a big brush. I'm gonna hit it with a small base brush. Just to... Just to coat it. For these, be very careful. I've also got the red as well. So. Don't forget any of your blood drops. So while we're waiting for bits about to dry, we're going to actually do the eyes. We're going to do the eyes on this thing. We're going to do the eyes on the sanguineous, and then we're going to do the eyes as well. And then I've still not done them skulls with um, still not cut down them skulls with the seraphim sepia. Now for the eyes on the big beastie, I actually painted little dots of grace here from the contrast paint range in and and what i'm going to do is just to put a bit of all flesh in now that will give us a surround as well as an eye that technique works well on space marine lenses so there you go you'll actually have an eye for detail <laughs> now when it comes to sanguinus's head and it comes to the puma or yeah face i actually use citadel air and i use white scar and a bed and black and the reason i use citadel air is because they're very thin paints to start with and you're not really having to water them down. So with the white, might be a bit too much. Always rub off the excess with this on a wet palette. Oh, nerves. First your hands, be gentle. We've got the whites of his eyes. Quite sure if you saw that on camera. We're gonna do that again. Any excess, wipe it off in the wet powder. Don't wipe it off on tissue because you'll actually dry out the hole because it's very thin. You'll dry out the hole of the brush wipe. Oh, 
that looks cracking. It should be the same for this chappy here. Yeah, and then uh, looking good. Yeah, right, let that dry, and we're gonna hit it with the black. So of course we're not hitting that with a black pupil. We are hitting this with a black pupil. Couple of them. Wipe the excess off on your wet palette. Like I said, don't use a dry palette, it will dry out the entirety. Now this is very, very, very tricky. I hate doing it. I'm not quite sure I'm going to like doing it on camera. Kind of got to... Oh. When you're trying to do it as well, it will dry out incredibly, incredibly quick. But you don't... I wasn't breathing when I was doing that. <laughs> right, let's see, let's hope you can see that. That is very, very tiny eyes. <sighs> Hoping you can see that, I've managed to also do it as well on that figure. If anybody knows any better way of doing eyes, message me or send me a link to something down below because man, I hate doing eyes. Back to the red now. Thinned. Very thinned. And gently. Gently, gently, gently just caressing those spots. I've got up a little bit on this procedure you can. A shine. I'll be honest, I think the next bit is probably going to be the most nerve wracking for me putting the black line into the center dots. Okay, the red has been caressed. We've got some nice looking drops. They'll look even better once it gets to the varnish stage. Now, on the ones in the centre, he has, it's a line down him. So I'm using the air again. And we're just gonna try as steady as we can. It looks a bit like the air horus. Too bad that. So Sanguinis is nearly done. What I'm going to do now is to assemble this particular part together and then we're going to go and we're going to get some blood, some ichor as it were, all over this. And we're going to put it onto some of the base as well but we're also going to try and create a glowing effect coming from the base but we need this to be able to interact with that to get that done. And I think I've knocked it a bit off there. Oh, that's, nope, that's tissue. Right. <laughs> Let's glue these together. Now, we're gonna come up to the base. Um, I've glued him on, and the reason I've glued him on is because the bits I'm gonna be doing might affect him. It's kind of like a red glow. So on a lot of the images, it's a red glow, red to orange, like a flame, I suppose. Uh, like as if hell's coming through the earth itself. So what I'm gonna do is to use Evil Sun Scarlet in the airbrush, we're gonna just caress the areas so we'll build it up and build it up and then we'll uh, then change over to Avalon Sunset 
and we'll build that up and build that up as well and that should give us a transition between the dark red to the red to the orange and again we'll just slowly but surely do that um, we're not going to go crazy I don't think and we're just going to put it in spots we're not going to put it everywhere mainly here and then possibly on the sanguinous we'll put it across the skull bits of the actual base and then I might even put a little bit of grass in every now and again I'm not sure um, but we'll, we'll see what that looks like once it's done so nozzles off I've cleaned it it's actually taken me a while to clean it <laughs> and I'm going to gently put the red in these areas This is why I glued him on because there's going to be some sections that's going to kind of interact with that monster, that demon. I'm trying to get in as tight as I can. Oh, I didn't see. Oh, well. Okay, so onto the yellow, I've put it in, I've not cleaned the brush out completely because I've still on a bit of the red, and I'm doing it in dots, so as you can see from that one, there's little bits of, sorry for me, I'm getting in the way, there's going to be little sort of dots or collections, so on that big piece, and then of course more focused in the centre. Same everywhere you can think. Doesn't have to be fierce, can just be a little light touch. There we are. It's looking lavery already. Now, when it comes to the back bit, which is this here. I'm gonna do it in lines, so I'm gonna kind of go up. Um, so as an example, and then and then focus it more on the bottom. I'm going to put a quick line across as well, so just to give that a bit more of a... the quintessential last things I'm going to be doing is this, this is before I put the varnish on um, I'm going to be getting the old brush and we're going to be making what I like to call concoction so this is going to involve blood from the blood god and my brightest purple now we're going to create a mess is the best way of putting it 
I've got two purples as well. So we're going to create what I would call demon ichor, sort of like demon blood. And we're going to use Xerius purple, that has gene stealer purple, and blood for the blood god. So, blood for the blood god, I'm just going to. And I want it in thick piles on your dry palette, separate from each other. You gotta be quick because this will dry. All right. So you can probably use blood from the blood for pure from the pot. If I'm being completely honest. So we've got some damage areas, and I'm even going to include that as a damage section. So we stipulate on. I'm going to put both of the blood on first. Showing the injuries he has sustained. Possibly while fighting Sanguinus and getting his rumpus kicked. All these lovely marks. To me, could be damage. Now, it all seems to be concentrated on top. So, what we're going to do, we're going to the purple quickly before it dries, and then we're going to kind of Spodge it together. And get a bit more blood from the blood guard. Maybe a bit more direct from the pot. Yeah. And we're just going to staple that on top. Make sure we're getting it in a thick glob. This is why we need it in a thick glob because we need it as a big blob to kind of drop on there. And then we need the other colour to paint over it. And then we're going to add a little bit of the bright purple. We need to mix. Finish off, put these two away, and you just finish off with a bit more blood for the blood god. Not, not fingerly applied, we're not, we're gonna apply this thick in dabs. And then, when that dries, it will give us injury, the damage, the blood of the demon. So if you can see that there, now that it's dry, it looks more like maybe an angry wound or... The idea is, is just to make it look a bit different. I don't want it to be looking like just blood. It has to look like something else. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of done. And... Uh, I need to stick some varnish on this. So what I'm going to do is just assemble it. It is a pain in the backside to assemble. It's not the easiest figure to go together if I'm perfectly honest. Right. Now that it's together, I will now... Now that it's together... Oh, I didn't realise that wasn't actually looking. It needs to be a bit further down, I think. There we go. Sorry, guys. Oh, massive apologies. Right, we are going to now varnish it. So I'm going to just basically, you can varnish it any which way you want to varnish. I prefer this. This is Mecha Varnish from Vallejo. I 50-50 it, so I put 50% water in my airbrush, 50% Vallejo Mecha Varnish. I do it from a distance and it seals the model nicely by giving it a little shine, not too much of a shine if I dilute it down, which is pretty cool. And then I'll probably go back through once that's dry, because that'll take about 15, 20, well, it says, I think it says on the packet that it should be ready. Um, you know, it should be, a, well, it says fast drying, but great resistance to impacts after 24 hours after applying. Um, that is technically correct, but you tend to be able to pick them up after about 15, 20 minutes. And then once I've done that, I'll hit certain areas like his weapon, 
maybe even paint the armor and uh, the blood bits and some of the poles i'll hit them with the ard coat from games workshop and that will uh, then give it an extra sh shine here we have it hopefully this uh video looks better when it's on the pc um we've got everything sorted the wings the guy the guy on the ground yeah looks all right it's not golden demon winning my stuff never is if i'm perfectly honest uh, but what it is is really good tabletop quality now if you are wanting to uh, get some commission paint work if you just want to get in touch uh, it's rootstand.co.uk um, ignore the background noise if you can hear it i'm trying to uh, this is the, the joys of having children uh, yeah if you go to rootstand.co.uk send us a message then we'll be able to uh, send you a uh, you know, tell us what you're wanting to paint or can see some price listings normal models tend to start about four quid a figure uh, right well thanks for very much for watching guys uh, that's part three of the Primark series I don't think I'm going to be doing another one for a bit unless somebody passes me one and that's it so yeah we will see you next time please like share subscribe hit that notification button for more and if you want to support us you can also do that down at roostand.co.uk just by doing a PayPal donation all right Thank you guys, see you next time.